Hi, Dr. Dave Webster. In my ongoing um, social media attempt uh, to point out to the travesty of the access to uh, PET CT in our liberal, so called evidence based face, patients first healthcare system, we need to know that PET CT has been the world accepted world standard of imaging management um, for over 20 years now and in places like Chile and Argentina. This post will be directly to the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario and the Cancer Care Ontario. And I assure you they are monitoring this video. Um, the question is, is whether they will demand that I be shut down and, and that you do not have access to this information. So, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, for those of you don't, who don't know already, that's my licensing body. They license physicians to practice in Ontario. Uh, but in a very important role is that they are supposed to protect you from bad doctors, which they are now investigating me as a bad doctor for you. So, they're not supposed to be my friend for that very reason, and you wouldn't want them to be. But the question I want you to consider as you watch this video blog and any that I can get up subsequently are they, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, a friend of Ontario's patients, and do they deserve your trust? So the issues are this. The Registrar of the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Dr. Rocco Gervais, has initiated an investigation into my conduct as a physician. Why? This is Cancer Care Ontario, our future built with care, as you can see. Cancer Care Ontario has complained to the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario uh, because of my so far fruitless 15 years of efforts uh, of asking uh, Cancer Care Ontario experts that they be open, transparent, and accountable to Ontario's patients. You'll see that I'm actually not the only one. Now, the established facts are this. I'm really just the messenger, and they know that. Um, but I have been demanding that Cancer Care Ontario respond to questions submitted to them by professional medical associations, individual physicians, and citizens. And as you will see, um, now they are refusing to even answer the questions, respond to questions from actual cancer patients in Ontario. Uh, since 2005, in fact, two th uh, Canadian and international pet experts have openly in their literature, for example, condemned Cancer Care Ontario in their college, McMaster University, and they have been using unprecedented and disturbing words and accusations such as unconscionable, egregious, a travesty. There was an editorial in the journal Nuclear Medicine um, by the president of the Society of Nuclear Medicine uh, talking about the, the capricious use of a scientifically baseless process to block Ontario cancer patients from the acceptable standard of imaging management PET. In fact, in 2005, the Canadian Association of Nuclear Medicine declared the CCO trials on cancer patients as unethical. To this date, that's not been acknowledged, um, nor dealt with, and in particular, the other motions have not been dealt with, as we will see subsequently. Uh, but the point is, is that Cancer Care Ontario has refused to address a single relevant question or defend how they make critical uh, decisions directly impacting the lives of you, Ontario's cancer patients or patients in general. It's important to look at this, this is a very uh, important article written by Dr. Professor Rodney Hicks from Australia and his colleague Dr. Ware and they outlined in great detail how CCO uh, discredits delays and blocks PET in Ontario. It was published in 2011. Uh, what Professor Hicks stated to me in July 2016 was this, and I hope you find this very disturbing. Ontario has the most egregious and politically motivated agenda against PET, read our patients, in the world. So, the established facts. The College of Physicians and Surgeons, in fact, is fully aware and has significant documentation in their position, as well as medical articles outlining all of the issues that I have challenged the government's medical experts with, including that 2005 copy of the motions from the Canadian Association of Nuclear Medicine, which, among other things, condemned the CCO trials as being, quote, unethical, end of quotes. Yet, of course, I am the one that's being investigated by the registrar interesting, isn't it? So, uh, I will assume the following in my response to the CPSO and the CCO that those who are working for CCO as medical experts or otherwise are in fact acting as public servants for you, the citizens of Ontario, on in the government. So, that those working for CCO are in fact expected to be open, transparent, and accountable to the citizens of Ontario. And I draw your attention to a publication that came out in uh, 2012, Cancer Imaging Program, Strategic Directions. I want you to uh, pay particular attention to the timely access to quality care. Um, by 2012, I mean, that had been 
routinely available in, you know, around the world, uh, even in Paraguay. Uh, and Ontario has the most restricted indications in the world, remember. So, uh, Dr. Robin, uh, or Michael, sorry, Dr. Michael Scherer is uh, the president and CCO, remains that way. Uh, this is Dr. Sagawa, uh, but she retired in 2013. Dr. Julian Dobronowski, however, continues in that role, and he's played a very key role in blocking Pat and refusing to uh, respond to my questions in particular. Uh, we'll have a lot more to say about that, but uh, this is their principles, guidelines. There's lots of things here, but what we're going to really focus on is the transparency. In other words, I've been challenging them, they've not been answering, and now I'm being uh, criticized for doing so and investigated as a bad doctor in Ontario. So, uh, another principle is that these public servant physicians are in fact expected to meet these standards of practice of physicians in Ontario, including the Hippocratic Oath, which we all had to take to practice medicine, and in part it says, first, do no harm to your patients. Fourthly, uh, that their actions are in fact directly responsible uh, for the advice given to the Ministry of Health and who make subsequent policies, uh, which are, as Ms. Wynn and Dr. Hoskins described to you, patients first healthcare policies uh, of their government. Now, in fifth, I mean, although normally if, if physicians have disputes amongst themselves about statements you make or things they publish, that's done behind the scenes. And I assure you that for many years we did work behind the scenes with Cancer Care Ontario, the Ministry of Health executives and so on, and they without exception refused to respond to us. Uh, but given now their refusal, first of all, to behind the scenes answer questions, and but in, more importantly, that their, their public and very critical role in health policy in Ontario, I think that it is reasonable and indeed critical that Ontario citizens, including me as an Ontario physician, should be able to publicly challenge issues that affect my health care or that of Ontario's patients. So my public statement to CPSO and the uh, Cancer Care Ontario, I am prepared to have your review of CCO's complaints against me entirely take place in the public realm. The question is, is whether the CPSO and CCO will be willing to do the same or will I be shut down? If, as the second point I'd like to make, if there is anything of which I am guilty, then I will be equally public with my mea culpa and apologies to the appropriate individuals. So, uh, my next post will be, why would I advise the parents of a 16-year-old unfortunate male just recently diagnosed with lymphoma to leave Ontario immediately? And you'll see why. Uh, an election's coming, this is critical, the patients of Ontario need your help uh, to uh, deal with the kind of people I have been confronting with all these years on your behalf. Thanks and uh, do what you can, share with everybody in the usual way. I don't really understand how the social media really works, but hopefully you do. Thanks and see you on the next blog.